Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the live stream. We are here painting the second layer of the Touch of Midas, my latest painting. I'm very excited for you to join me today. Um, today is, what is it, Saturday the 16th? March 16th? Yeah. Yeah, it's been raining all day here in the Dominican Republic, and uh, we were a little little curious if our internet would keep up, but it seems like it's doing okay, so we're going to continue. Um, we've got some different things going on today. Our setup is a little bit different. Um, I've got a new palette that I'll be excited to show you guys. Uh, let's see. There we go. Now you're following my face. All right, there we go. So, yeah, let me show you this new palette that we've got going on. So I just, I, I put a little piece of plywood together, toned it. You can see some of that tone's already coming off because I've been using it a little bit. Um, but uh, I've just been oiling it again and again for days. <laughs> and so now it's pretty well ready to use. Uh, although it's, it's really pulling the oil out of my paint a little bit. So it's not, it's not perfect just yet. But the more, you, more I use it, the better that's gonna get. So over to our painting now. Um, I also, I've made a little bit of progress here. Uh, you can see, oh, we've got a, a little bit of a glare. We'll see if we can fix that. Yeah, there you go. So I've made a little bit of progress. We've got the second layer on this section here and the second layer just behind his head back here and just a little bit coming down over his face to the left and right. So that's gonna be perfect because today we'll get his, his little hat done for sure. And maybe we can get into his face as well. Um, yeah, and you can see with this really zoomed in view here, that difference. Of course, the camera makes it look a little bit grainier, a little bit sharper than it really is, but you can see the difference between how, how much smoother a lot of this is compared to our first layer. <laughs> really pretty rough. So we're going to get into that, uh, smooth everything out, make sure everything's the right value, and uh, increase our, our contrast, increase our saturation. Um, should be good. So yeah, I'm excited. Um, something that I'm doing with this new palette is uh, I, I'm not really doing pre-mixes at all. You can, you can see there's a little bit on my palette here, just a little bit, and um, those are just to give me some very general, you know, I, I, I don't wanna use black straight out of the tube. So this one is going to be, uh, this is our, our is it, I, keep, I keep doing this, it's not ivory black. I do this every time, it's lamp black. Ivory black is usually what I would use, but when I'm here at the, at the academy, it's lamp black. So it's lamp black and then uh, raw umber uh, is what this one is, because I don't want to use black straight out of the tube. Uh, it dries a little funny. So yeah, lamp black and raw umber. I always pre-mix that one. And then these other ones are just some very general, you know, I need a kind of yellow-orange, pulled my white out a little bit, and then this is just sort of a dull, neutral sort of gray. So that's it. I'm, I'm not really doing much in the way of pre-mixing. You're going to see I'm going to mix a lot of the paints as I go, just with a brush. I don't, yeah, I've got my palette knife here somewhere, but I'm not really using it too much. So um, as we go along the painting, I'm sort of going to start in one spot and sort of move my way out from there and just sort of crawl along the surface. And uh, as the value color uh, all changes, I'm going to be adapting where my paint sits and that's gonna be it, no, no real pre-mixes that way. Um, I don't know that that's more efficient. I don't know that it's faster. I was doing that all day yesterday and um, it's more fun. I, you know, I, I have all these really bright greens and yellows and whites and everything in here and trying to move across all of those uh, because of how dissimilar they are. I was having a good time, it was nice. Um, it was a little bit challenging, so I, I enjoy the challenge. So let's get into it. We've got just the little hat here. That's what we're gonna be working on. And um, I already oiled out the surface just of this little section. And I did that with our Neil McGilp, which is on our palette right here. There we go. So it's just up in this little corner. That's our Neil McGilp my medium of choice. I'm keeping it closed. Actually, I don't know if you can see it. It's right down here on the corner, right down there. There's just a little tiny t uh, dab of it there. So I'm going to use that for now. I don't want anything else to dry out. So that's it. We're only going to be using a tiny bit just to oil out. And I probably won't even do much um, 
uh, you know, putting it into my paint itself unless it starts getting pretty dry, which again, this palette is, it's, it's taken some of that oil out. It's drying it all a little bit faster, but um, that'll be fixed the more I use it. So that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna lean in just a little bit. You may find it difficult to see. Oh, by the way, I do wanna mention, the reason that you see three um, different versions here, one of them obviously is my painting. The other one is my very accurate reference. It's the reference that I wanna go by. Um, the camera picks it up a little bit differently because of the difference in texture, but that's the one I wanna go by. And this one here is just a laminated version. Um, so that I can put some paint on it and just sort of check my colors and it's not as accurate as this one is because the lamination changes those colors a little bit makes it a little dull, you know um, But it's it's a good way to get very close and I can see Generally too light too dark too warm too cool. So it's pretty close So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna keep that there as well. So yeah, I'm gonna lean in and, uh, and we're gonna get started probably our zoomed in uh, view is going to be best. Yes, yeah, so you can really see what I'm what I'm up to there. There you go. All right, so let's get started. I'm just gonna I'm gonna do this. Tell you what, why don't you put my palette on there too? That's key eight. Yep. There you go. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that, and I'm gonna start way up here. I'm gonna check this color really quick. Yeah, that's right. So we're just gonna start right here sort of work our way across the surface. Now you can see this is lighter than my first layer was. Um, it's also a little bit cooler. And those are the kind of adjustments that I'm really focused on in my second layer. I wanna make sure that all of these are really spot on um, so that all of my form is properly communicated. And you know what, it's possible that in my second layer I've already mixed this just a little bit off, that's okay. Once I get it down a little bit more um, I'll be able to reassess, and I am going to warm this up just a tiny, tiny bit. All right. Yeah, I'll move my painting over just a little. There we go. All right, so, yeah, let's, let's get going. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. I'd love to talk to you. Um, you know what? A little too orange, a little bit more yellow is what I need on this one. And again, those are the sorts of things that are uh, easy to see once you put it down. So just change that up just a little bit. Yeah, it's a little, little too purple. That's okay. And you know what? I might, I might actually just pull some of that off because I put a little bit too much down already. So. Rough start, rough start to the uh, <laughs> rough start to today's painting session. I've been painting just for a minute today, but that little patch that is a little too purple. I'm moving my painting around just a little bit, but there we go. You do have a couple people saying hello in the chat. Pamela says hello, and Inez says hello. It's great to see your progress. Hello Inez, hello Pamela. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so happy we got some, some visitors. And if any of you are watching after the fact, after uh, you're not watching live, that's okay too. Um, please put your questions in the chat if you've got them and we'll come back to them. If you're not watching live, we'll come back to them on the next stream. If you are watching live, I'd love to talk to you about it. Just let me know. We, uh, Rachel and I went, we, we got a car and, and went out on the town this week, so that was our big excitement. Um, we went to a grocery store and got steaks, which I know sounds so mundane, but here in the DR, nobody really eats steak. Nobody, nobody's a, a big beef eater here, so um, we actually did find at one point in town, we found a restaurant that served steak called El Oso. Um, and it's clearly, you know, for tourists because <laughs> the locals just don't really eat there. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. Little, little expensive. It's pretty odd actually because we're in a country that doesn't really eat it. And so you go to the supermarket and every now and then, you know, we found uh, porterhouses at one point. And I think they were like $5 per porterhouse. We got like eight of them. <laughs> I don't know how many we got. It was, it was too many. 
but oh man well worth it and then every now and then you know because again nobody really eats there and they're uh, making them for tourists you go to these restaurants like El Oso is here and uh, really expensive for what you get just because they're, they're catering to me so <laughs> I'm gonna pay for it oh well yeah but that was our big excitement for the week um, we were going to have some VIP guests here. That didn't end up working out. That we're going to reschedule that for later. Um, yeah, that, that's about it. It's It's been a pretty decent painting week for me. I haven't gotten a ton done, but these last couple of weeks, um, I've been, I don't know, two, two days a week usually on painting. I really haven't gotten much time, so I'm happy, happy to be getting a little bit more time now. I'm moving across the painting, and as I do it, I'm, I'm just going to shift my, my color a little bit. A little bit warmer, a little bit lighter. Let's see. That should go... Ooh, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty dark still. Much lighter. Yeah. And I'm just pulling these, these painting strings kind of out as I go. And I don't know, I'm not, I'm just, I'm trying not to worry too much about it. I have so much space here on my palette now. Um, and I'm using so, so little paint. So, yeah, having a, having a more experimental time right now with my palette and everything. Get these kind of neutral grays in here, there's not many of them. And I actually have a lot more green in this, uh, in this section of the painting than I, I would probably initially expect. So I'll have to make sure I get those in there. And everything, all my neutrals are looking relatively purple. Um, and they aren't. They are not purple for sure. But they're looking that way because everything's so yellow, so orange in here that it's comparatively... Yeah, man, it's really, really throwing my color off. Making it hard to uh, to color match here. Not the end of the world, but I'll get there. Don't worry. I see you worrying. I'll get there. What do you think? Do we have a question in the chat? I was actually just wondering how huh. you're liking this new palette setup. It's not bad. You know, I started doing this. I, I changed my palette setup a little bit. Um, because I was having some uh, some pain in my my left wrist, and I think I talked about that on one of our previous uh, live streams, and I was just trying to find a way where I could I could continue painting without without uh, aggravating my uh, my injury, and uh, my solution was I needed to get my palette up off my hand, so this is what I decided to go with, and I don't know it's, it's working okay. It's not bad. I, it's funny actually, I think I might, I may, if I don't uh, resolve it, I may cause another issue because I'm used to being so balanced with my left to right hand. And uh, now I find myself leaning to my left because there's no palette on my left arm. And so my right arm comes up and my left arm comes down. And yeah, so now I'm a little unbalanced and my shoulder's starting to hurt, so I don't know. I, I, I haven't quite figured it out yet. I'm not quite there, but it's, it's progress. So um, having, the, having a palette up on the, on the easel here is probably a little bit better for viewership. I know it's not as cool, it's not as fancy, it's not as pretty, but probably a little bit better for viewership. Looking too bad. A little more orange in there. Um, the last time we streamed, it was on the left side of the painting, right over here. And um, I don't know what happened. Maybe I was just talking too much during that one. But I ended up going back, as I, as I said that I probably would. I ended up going back and uh, fixing some of those values, really getting into the detail a little bit better. So I ended up almost. Uh, just redoing everything that I did during the last stream. Just having to focus a little bit more. Hmm? Sure. sure. See how well you can see it there. Yeah. So last stream we were we were kind of up around this area, and I was I made a couple mistakes right there, 
right, with these. And uh, as I was continuing and trying to, you know, pull my way down and, and go back over everything, uh, yeah, I just, I found that it was, it was just going to be easier to, to do it all over again. So it didn't take me that long anyway. And I would rather do things again than have them be a little bit wrong. So in that instance, definitely the better option was, eh, just do it again. It's okay. Not a big deal. Usually, that's the better option. Slows you down a day, yeah, maybe. A couple hours, probably. But, it's worth it. Um, Anthony Wachulis, who I learned from, he was telling me a story. He was, uh, he was painting, I think it was a ball. You said he was painting a red ball. <clears throat> on one of his paintings, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, he said, I, I don't remember, or marble maybe? I don't quite remember, but he was telling me that he had uh, repainted this ball, this marble, it must have been five different times. He just kept going back and it was never quite good enough. And of course, everybody else was looking at it like it was perfect the first time, and the second, and the third, and it was, it was always exactly what it should have been, but. When, you, when you're looking at your own work a lot closer, oh, well, you can see it, and you can see that you're not happy with it. And usually, that's the important part anyway, as an artist, you wanna, you wanna know that your work is the best that you can do. Sometimes, it just isn't. You gotta fix it, you gotta go back. All right, so I am, I'm making this spot just a little bit too bright so that I, if I come in, with some of my high chroma colors. It will brighten it up right in that spot and it'll lower the chroma just a little bit. Um, especially these warmer colors. You know, white, white is such a, may not, may not quite look it, look it at first, but um, titanium white is more of, a, more of a purple than anything. It's not, not completely neutral. Which is why when you mix it with uh, any black, you end up getting that, that nice blue. Of course, your blacks are usually very cool, and uh, your white happens to be pretty cool as well, so. That's what you get. All right, not bad. Not bad, so we're gonna keep moving over, get this little transition down. And there's a lot of texture in this spot, so I'm gonna end up putting putting a bunch of texture in as I continue. Um, but for now, I just wanna get my basics in there. I wanna get these as close as I can. Um, you know, I'm gonna get some of these greens in there too because there's a lot of this sort of green in there. And again, comparatively, it looks green. It, 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 I'm sure that it's nowhere near as green as it looks to me, but Add just a tiny bit of green in there. Just see what happens. You can see all of these are really quite neutral, but I'm gonna add just a touch of green. See where that gets me. Subtle. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of green. That's okay. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. I'm gonna exaggerate that just a tad. Just a little bit. Same thing I did actually just right above his head right here. That little bit of kind of blue green. I just really like it. Really nice, so I exaggerated that just a little bit. I wanted to make sure I got that in there. All right, so our green's coming in. It's a little bit dark now, so before we fix that, though, I wanna come around this form, get that little bit of green in there, that little bit of neutral in there. Right there, okay. Move that just a little bit. I know you guys are getting a little bit of a glare. The more I tip it up like that, oh, there we go. You see that little bit of a glare, especially on uh, the parts that I did yesterday that are still a little bit wet. But if it's too low, I get the glare. So <laughs> as much as I don't want you guys to have that glare, I'd much rather I don't have it. <laughs> you don't have to paint it. I'm afraid my viewpoint's a little bit more important on this one. Do you mind if I take a second to ask the chat a 
production question? No, oh, please. We have a couple of different options for this view, and I'm just wondering what is a more visually good experience. <laughs> so we have the palette and the close-up here. I have the close-up with the palette in the corner in a box, or let's see, I have this way. Ooh. Oh, hello. You see a little bit more of the painting, but it's primarily a view of the palette. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess if you turn around, it's your face cam too. I'm wondering if that's better to look at, or if the black bars on the top and the bottom are not as pleasant. Let me know what you think. There's some options here, and I'm just wondering what what you guys like best. I definitely think you get a better view of the actual painting. Uh, when it's larger, you get the little, little box. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's just me. Yeah, let us know what you guys like. And if there's something you'd like to see, or see things a certain way, see two things together, feel free to let us know. We've got, um... A lot of capabilities and are still trying to find the best ways so we're open to suggestions you know it's funny if you do the other way where you've got painting on the left palette on the right you can then also put my face on it and we'll get almost every view we have all in one <clears throat> I don't know how that would be for <laughs> as a viewer that would be a better experience I doubt it So we're crawling our way up the painting here. I'm gonna uh, come over here. I do still have a little bit to do down here. You know what? I probably I should I should I should figure that out before I continue. I'm just I'm getting excited about the highlight on the top, so I want to move on. Inez made a good suggestion. I might give it a try. Um, we could alternate between the painting and the palette, depending on what you're talking about. So just have one thing on the screen at a time. Oh, good luck. <laughs> I'll give it a try for a that's, few that's minutes. A if it to gets too chaotic, with. let me know. I'm moving back and forth a lot. And I talk too much. Speaking of talking too much, Rachel and I are now in a book club talking about the Sherlock Holmes books. We're in a book club, like, with each other, because we're nerds. <laughs> it's just the two of us and a couple of friends. Um, but um, I've read uh, a lot of the the tales of Sherlock, or the adventures, rather, the adventures of Sherlock Holmes, um, which are, uh, you know, a collection of some of the short stories um, written in Strand Magazine originally, which I love because... Strand Magazine, if you've played any of the Frogware uh, Sherlock Holmes games, are integrated into the games as if they are, you know, magazines in the games that John Watson is uh, writing in. Very fun. So yeah, we've, we've read uh, a, a Study in Scarlet was the last one we read. Did you finish it? Have you finished it? I think. No, I'm still on part two. Oh. I'm, I'm supposed to try to finish this weekend because all of you guys are done. <laughs> it's, the, it's the first Sherlock Holmes novel. And if you guys like Sherlock Holmes, you're going to hate the second half of that book because he's not in it. <laughs> he's just completely absent. It explains why I slowed down. It's interesting. It's a, it's a good story. It's an interesting story. But yeah, he's just gone. Second half. And uh, also interesting, Arthur Conan Doyle said that, because um, he, I don't know, did he go to medical school or was he just trained somehow in medicine? I, I don't remember. Do you know that? No? But uh, he said one of his, one of his instructors, one of his mentors, um, was able to like really decipher 
uh, you know, the illnesses that somebody had and their profession and, you know, where, what they were last doing or what they were last eating, whatever it was, just by looking at them and sort of deducing that about them. And he said that's what inspired him to write Sherlock Holmes is what if you were able to apply that amount of deduction to every aspect of a person's life and death and solve crimes with it that way because he was a he was a fan of crime novels and detective stories and he said he was frustrated because um, normally it, it, uh, of that time all of these you know detective stories they were solved out of coincidence and hunches and not out of you know any amount of skill from the detectives and he said he was just mad about it so he wanted to write something a little more I don't know, hero-centric, where it was you know, because someone was just so competent, so good at what they were doing, that they were able to solve these crimes. So that's what he wrote. Are you finding some inspiration in it? For a painting? Yeah, in a sense, or loosely, either way. You know, I... I so Walrus and the Carpenter was uh, a painting that I did pretty recently, and one of the things that I, I end up coming back to uh, are paintings like that where I'm inspired in some way uh, from a story that, that just really hits me, that I just really like. And it's not so much like this, this you know, crazy composition and, and you know, great storytelling of a painting, and more just that I want to be able to depict uh, a story that has already been written and is already, you know, well fleshed out um, through a single piece of visual work. And that's really cool to me. That's really exciting to me. So, you know, if I am inspired by these, it's in that way. That, um, you know, these are just very cool, very interesting stories and being able to, to depict them extremely efficiently through a single um, a single visual, that's interesting to me. But otherwise, no. I have on my list, I, I do have a, uh, a murder mystery um, style of, of composition that I want to do eventually. Maybe I will. We'll see. It's a little more modern though. It's a little more uh, modern as in like art movement modern, not contemporary. Um, I'm afraid I, I'm afraid my time periods that I refer to are art time periods almost exclusively. Um, so I mean it's a little more, you know, 50s, 60s looking as the way I've imagined it. And who knows, maybe that changes the second I put my brush down, so, you know, you never know. Yeah, but maybe one day. Um, Walrus and the Carpenter was a great example of that, that it, it very much started as uh, something that I like, that I just appreciate, and I wanted to, I wanted to try to depict it, and as I worked in it, um, it changed, and it developed, I'm um, sorry, I'm wiping out some of the paint that's on my reference here, um, it changed and developed and, you know, turned into a different sort of style, a different sort of look that allowed me to tell a, a more dynamic story than just, hey, remember Walrus and the Carpenter? <laughs> so I don't want it to be that simple when I get into um, retelling of stories like that. But... So yeah, I don't know, maybe one day do some, some Sherlock Holmes looking stuff. I don't know, you know, Sherlock Holmes has been uh, depicted a, such a such a great number of times. Um, I'm I'm very sure it's fair to say that Sherlock Holmes is the most well known media detective. Um, I'm, I'm sure that that's I'm sure that that's right. So a depiction of Sherlock Holmes is something that people have seen a million times. So I don't know. If I were able to find a way to uh, to make that my own, to make it different, I, w I guess I would consider it. But if I'm honest, I paint things as the mood sort of strikes me, 
which uh, as, as a professional artist, you certainly need to be able to work whether you are inspired or not. But I have the, uh, the good fortune, I guess, of my work taking so long that by the time I am finished with it, actually usually very before I have finished with it, I'm already ready to move on to the next thing. I've already, you know, um, found some source of inspiration or a project that I want to pursue. It's already done. I've already found it. So. Artist's block is difficult to get when you work so slowly. It's also, I mean, it's also something difficult to get when, uh, when you're just always thinking about it, you know? Always have ideas. It's usually right around here, it's actually just before where I'm at in the progress of this painting, that um, I'll start getting sick of the painting and I don't want to do it anymore. And I start thinking, you know what, I'd rather do a different painting. And that's when my wheels start, start really going, really start turning. And, and I start thinking about my next paintings and what I'd like to do with them. And um, so by the time I am finished with this one, I already have my next probably two, three in mind. So, and unfortunately, Sherlock Holmes is not amongst them right now. <laughs> if, if anyone was really dying for, for a cool Sherlock Holmes painting from me, I'm sorry. You're, you're going to be disappointed. Joint. Not bad. You know, I want to get into that bright highlight here because that's, it's really, it feels like it's really anchoring the rest of what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I want to, I want to pull into that a little bit and I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to get some nice yellow oranges here. Really, really high chroma um, so that as I get into, yes, it's a little bit too dark. As I get into those whites, um, I have, you know, something to sort of lean into so my chroma doesn't drop. So I'm, uh, I'm sort of getting this little bit of a string here, a little more orange on one end, more yellow on the other. Um, I have found that um, having that sort of dynamic change to your color as you go uh, with gold, so you've got your your darker is usually warmer until you get into some reflections. And then your lighter uh, is usually, well, warmer. Still, still warm, but you, you get more yellow, a little bit less orange, a little bit less red, a little bit more yellow. So you can see that string there. We've got the, the red orange, and then that, as it comes down, it gets brighter and lighter towards white, more yellow than towards white. So that's the sort of, that's the sort of, um, transition that I'm looking for on this little painting or, or on this little highlight here, but it's just really fast. So there are some slower aspects. You can see them right there is a little bit of a slower one, but in general, you're going to find those happen very, very quickly. Um, you can see them actually in these highlights up here. They happen really fast. So you get white, white, yellow, orange, red, then into brown. So they happen quick but that's, that's approximately what I'm looking for. Of course, you do have these parts down here, these kind of greens, blues that I love so much. So I gotta put those in as well, but, uh, but in general, that's what I'm looking for, for some gold. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that, put that on there, see if I can get those, that nice sort of transition. And this is something that it may end up looking better uh, if I were to raise the chroma more in subsequent glazes and subsequent passes. So I may end up doing that. I'm just gonna raise you here a little bit. There we go. So you can see the top of my head. And my little, my little moth pin. I don't know, is that very loud <laughs> considering that's also where my, my microphone is? Let's see, drop you just a little bit. There we go, there we go, okay. You know, it's uh, one of the one of the aspects of this being on the easel, my palette being on the easel. Is if I if I do anything with the palette, the entire thing moves. <laughs> so I will consider that in the future, maybe some something different to do. But all right, so we're going to continue here, and I'm just sort of trying to 
lock in, here's where all of these highlights are going to go. And I'm putting this bright yellow in here, and if you look at the reference, that bright yellow is not really in there, but um, my white is going to really wash it out as I continue, so that's fine. And like I said, I, I do think that raising some of this chroma um, in, a, uh, in another pass, in sort of a glaze pass, might be the way to do it. Um, I go back and forth with this a little bit. Something like this in here, oh, you can't quite see it, that's okay. Oh yeah, there you go. Something like this in here, um, th that, is, that is probably exactly what's gonna happen, um, is just by pushing the white into it, I've sort of washed it out, and I started with the highest chroma I could get up here, and it's just not quite reading the way that I want. So I am probably going to, uh, to do some glaze passes there, put a little orange, a little red in there, just to raise that chroma as I go. Um, but that's okay for now. I'm pretty happy with it so far, but probably the same thing's gonna have to happen right here on this highlight. Part of doing all these gold, uh, gold colors, gold values, is that as you move across them, um, they're very shiny, so they have these specular highlights, so the value can change really rapidly. Um, and because of how chromatic everything is on this on this gold, yeah, the, the, the chroma also changes really rapidly. It makes it pretty difficult to, to keep up with it and do both, but I'm gonna do my best. We'll give it a shot. Oh boy, painting just moved a little bit. There we go. This is what I get for resting my hand on the side of the painting. I do have a mall stick here right there, but it, it really kind of gets in the way uh, of the shot, so try not to use it too much. But in this instance, I'm working on something a little bit too fine. I think I, I'm going to have to use it. So we'll pull the painting back just a little bit. There we go. All right, and then I'm going to get into some of these yellows here. Just trying to get those through that highlight right on the edge, trying to get a nice smooth transition through it as well. It must have a little bit of contamination on my brush, or it's that um, everything's a little bit duller than it should be because of that second layer. It's pretty dull, pretty dark. That's what we're here to fix today. my favorite part of doing paintings like this one is that I've specifically designed it around a particular challenge. Now the challenge of this painting is twofold. The first is that there's a lot of gold and that gold and how reflective it is also man, it makes it pretty difficult to paint sometimes. The other challenge which we've only just scratched the surface of, is on the right side of the painting. It's all that, all that blurry, out of focus, that bokeh, that uh, all the, the chains and concentric circles of the cap, of the, of the, paint, the paint cap. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be tough. It was already tough once on the first layer, but if I'm honest, I kind of phoned it in. <laughs> And thought, you know what? This is this is second second layer me's problem, and for right now, it's fine. So now now I am on the second layer. Now this is second layer me, and I'm gonna regret doing that. <laughs> it's okay. It was gonna be challenging no matter what. So all right. So really, really gently working this in. We want to be pretty. Pretty easy with our white. So like I said, it's gonna it's gonna throw the, the the chroma way down of anything it touches. So I'm gonna use that white contamination just a little bit to sort of blend it out on the right side and a little bit on the bottom. That's why I wanted to do everything around it before I got the white in. Normally you would want to give yourself your brighter anchors, um, but in this case, yeah, I just wanna I want to avoid getting too much contamination in there. There we go. 
yeah, not terrible. I am I am dropping my value just a little bit. It's not quite as bright as it should be. Um, and you know, you guys are you're zoomed in really, really. I mean, look at the just the scale of my my brush. You guys are really zoomed in here, so you're actually seeing it a little bit better than I am. We could get you one of those magnifying glass things like Anthony has. Magnifying glass thing? Yeah, doesn't he have like a magnifying glass thing clipped to his easel? He does, yeah. Yeah, it's on a little uh, spring arm deal. Looks like a jeweler <laughs> when he's using it. Yeah, you know what? I do, for, for some areas, I do have a little magnifying glass. It just makes it blurry for you guys, though. <laughs> okay, yeah, there we go. So yeah, I do have one, um, and I used it over in this right section here. What what's right under here? There it is. Oh, you can't see because my arm's in the way. There it is. <laughs> That's the difficult section. So of course I'm working left to right because the left section so easy in the right section is not so easy so I'll, I'll get there but yeah I was I was using the magnifying glass for that one um, just to even just count those concentric circles really really difficult I'm not used to working on this scale all the time I do sometimes um, but to be consistently working on this scale it's just not something I'm really used to you can even tell from my brushes honestly this is a, a Princeton Imperial round zero and uh, for this this tight of work, um, I, I do have smaller brushes. I've got a, a, tri a double zero, triple zero, and then the Scepter Golds, Scepter Gold 2 quadruple zero, just minuscule, minuscule. But I don't like using them as much. I, I like using these slightly larger brushes. Um, and it gives me a very specific type of mark that isn't always appropriate for this scale. So yeah, I'm just I'm just not quite used to doing it. But we'll get there in the end. Don't worry about that. Alright, so I got a little bit high with my brush with my brush. I got my 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 brush marks went a little little too high, so I know I'm sorry I'm I'm cranking my arm up here. I just I'm really trying to avoid touching my painting at all. I don't want to put my mall stick in, cover everything. There we go. So sort of reestablish the boundary for that white white area. There we go. That's not too bad. So no, yeah, you can see the difference in brightness between the new highlight and the old highlight. Much, much brighter. Much better. So we're gonna keep that up as we go. Do this little separation here. And these little highlight areas, like I was saying before, I'm probably gonna to have to do a glazing pass on. So if they're not quite perfect, I think I'm just not gonna stress about it. Not gonna worry about it. Those brushes you were showing, are those the ones you got from Marquis? Yep, yeah, uh, Marquis Art and Frame. Um, and my Princeton Imperials are all from there. The, um, the Scepter Gold Twos, those are from there as well. Uh, the Dynasties are also from there. Um, I think most of my other brushes are not, but, but yeah. They're having an exhibition right now in their gallery space. Are they? Yeah, they're celebrating... Um, Women's History Month. Nice. If we have anybody watching, um, friends from Pennsylvania, from the wilkes Bear, Scranton area, um, I'll put the address in the chat. You can check it out. It looks pretty cool. I saw some pictures. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, they were they were pretty good to us when we were in Pennsylvania. Gave us a little bit of uh, a little bit of a sale on framing and art materials and things like that from being, you know, with being from the academy, so 
Yeah, I appreciate that. It's also just very nice to find people who are, you know, knowledgeable and passionate about art and art materials and, you know, they, they care. And that's, that's really nice to see. Um, there are certainly places that, that really don't. <laughs> Some, you know, generic arts and craft stores where you find somebody working there who just, eh, I don't know, it's just a job, eh, whatever, who cares, which is fine, you know, but it's all, it's also very, very nice as, as a, a professional artist to meet other people who are uh, at least interested, if not also very passionate about it, really cool. There's nothing like going to a framer who knows more about frames than you do. That, oh, that's such, such a nice experience. And it's rare. They have a lot of really cool frames they there, do. too. Yeah, a lot of unique ones. stuff. Yeah, there was one uh, when we were still in Pennsylvania. I want to say it was like $300, $300-$400. It was originally much more expensive, and it went on sale. I think they had built it for someone. Um, and then that person, for whatever reason, wasn't able to pick it up. So uh, it was just sitting there and they, they were trying to get rid of it. And man, it was gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. It was three, I wanna say it was two by three feet or three by four feet. It was big. Yeah, it was huge enough that we were like, we already knew that we were gonna be traveling. <laughs> but I remember we stood in there staring at it for probably I mean, realistically, like 20 to 30 minutes just being like, yeah. isn't... And, and we went back several times. I think it was three by four feet because it was enormous. And we were really considering it because three by four feet and it was like two or three hundred dollars. Very, very, very cheap for that. That enormous and beautiful of a frame. I was like, oh man, I really, you know, I want to do big paintings. I want to do this huge work. It would be so cool, and the frame is beautiful, and I love it. And I'm glad we didn't end up getting it. Somebody did buy it. It was not me. But uh, I'm glad we didn't end up getting it, because pretty shortly after that, we ended up <laughs> coming here to the DR, and there was no way that we were going to get that thing here. So, And I didn't do any paintings uh, in that time that could have used such a frame. So, yeah, probably good. But I, but I, I, you know, I wish I, I were to come across frames and frame deals like that more. But I never have. Do you think you'll continue to build frames? Did you like that experience? Yeah, um, yeah. You know, eventually, while we're here, we do have the frame shop that's here. Um, reasonably well equipped. Definitely, uh, I would like for my personal uh, shop, if I if I have one, I would like some other tools, some more tools that just aren't reasonable to expect uh, an academy to own, but that I feel that I would utilize and, and really appreciate. So yeah, I, I think eventually I'm gonna have my own uh, my own workshop and, and I'll be able to continue building frames. Honestly, I, I have a, a reasonably large and diverse skill set. And I really just like, you know, sometimes taking a break from what I'm working on and, and just try another project, you know? I, I like just having something else to think about, something else to, to ponder over, some, some new problems to solve. Um, definitely keeps me a little more, more active, mentally active that way. Uh, this year, actually, or I suppose it would have been last year, um, I usually, I do pumpkin carving every year, and I really enjoy it, it's a lot of fun. Um, but this last year, we did a little bit of pumpkin carving, and I don't know what happened. I just wasn't interested anymore, and I, I've done it for so many years, maybe. That just falls in the same thing of just like, this isn't, this isn't really new and, and exciting to me anymore. So I'm sure uh, when we're back where pumpkins are uh, I'll probably do some more pumpkin carving eventually but, but yeah for now I don't know I just I need to find something else to 
really pique my interest. And uh, most recently, it was building some frames, very elaborate frames. I started with a very, very simple one, um, relatively, uh, on Portrait of Olive, which is a very fun, cool painting that I did of our tiny little dog, who I love so much, and she's so cute, and I miss her a lot. But, uh, yeah, right after that one, I, I, I jumped into some really complex and difficult frames, and I had a great time. I just like doing it. I just like having, a, having an interesting challenge. Speaking of an interesting challenge, um, I, my first layer was not quite as accurate in this one little area as I would have hoped. So I'm moving stuff around just a little bit. Not too big of a deal. And yeah, the rim of his hat here isn't quite where it belongs. That's okay. We're gonna we're gonna work into his face a little bit later anyway. Maybe even tomorrow, I don't know. But we're gonna get into his face, so I'll be able to sort of push that up, up and away. So for right now, eh, not a big deal. I don't want to leave a hard line though, so no matter what I do, I am going to put just a little bit of paint into his into his face, just to just to make sure I can blend it in pretty pretty nicely. All right, so before I move on, um, I just want to establish this outline just a little bit better, and I am bleeding down into his face just a little bit. That's exactly what I want to be doing. Um, so we can get that kind of ramping into from one layer to the next. Uh, instead of, you know, some really hard lines. We don't want that in here. Okay. So, yeah, I just want to reestablish that a little bit. Yeah. We're a little light. A little light, so reestablish it a little bit darker. Just right there. Oh, can you not see? Yeah. Are you looking through my glasses? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, so it's just for this one part. I'm here. You know what? I'm gonna use my mall stick, so I don't have my arm way up in the air like that. I don't have to lean so much. Kind of what I was saying is that now that I don't have anything in my left hand, I have more of a more of a proclivity to leaning into my left. I have to try not to do that. Yeah, it, it makes sense that you've been sore this week because that's yeah. you moved your palate at the beginning of the week. <laughs> Mystery solved. You've been all week. Why am I sore? Yeah. Well, now that we're <laughs> watching it happen, it makes sense. Those, you know, repetitive uh, use injuries. <laughs> when paint is all you do, like, <laughs> as it is for me, that's what happens. Could it be considered a sport in a way? No. You're not an athlete? No. No, in the same way that Subway calling their... <laughs> their employees sandwich artists? Uh, no. I am not a painting athlete, no. <laughs> All right. So yeah, this little, little section right here that I just put in, way too bright. But I just wanted to get that established so that I can pull it down. There you go. That's a little bit better. Hey, you know what? I don't know. Maybe maybe there are some people who work at Subway who are really wonderful artists.
but it's not because they work at Subway. <laughs> that always really got me. That always really bothered me. Why did you why did you do that? It's also like a little insulting to the employees too. Like if I if I worked at Subway and you know my manager were like, hey, because you work here at Subway, you're an artist. I'd be like, oh come on. <laughs> so insulting. Oh, I'm an artist? Is that why I'm not getting full-time benefits? Really? Is that? Oh <laughs> All right, we won't get into it. It's fine. <laughs> As a subway artist, we won't respect your time off. You sound like you've worked at Subway and you I have like a vendetta. That's, that's a, well, I've I've worked jobs that I I I believe treat you in similar ways. I, you know, we've all worked some pretty lousy jobs, and it just that feels like one of them. Just trying to convince you, oh, you're an important member of the team, which is why they refer to you as your employee number. <laughs> I'm glad now you work for you. Oh, me too. Oh, you know what? I, I have very, very little to complain about. I work for for myself mostly. I work for Ani also, but you know. Working for Ani and working for myself are, are similar enough. Because who who has the only set of keys to the front door? Yeah, it's me. Yeah, right. So So not bad. We're just, I mean, I'm getting into a little bit of the texture here, um, which, yeah, it looks like you can see. It's not, not anything super exciting. And I, I don't want to give too much of it. I don't want to give too much texture, too much detail in here. Um, because a lot of this is really quite smooth and, uh, you know, a little bit blurry and... I do want to give the impression that this is the most in focus area because it is and that's why you can see all this little bit of texture, a little bit of detail. Um, but before I get too far into this, this little, uh, little figure, I don't want to assume that all of that is, is as necessary as it looks. It, you know, I, I want to go by what my reference is telling me as much as possible um, and I will do that. but. I have a natural tendency um, to really push detail and really exaggerate it. Um, it's just part of, you know, working on a smaller scale and having your face like two inches away from the painting <laughs> is that you kind of just want to push it a little bit and you want to get tighter and tighter with your painting. Um, so in an effort not to do that, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not pushing all that detail quite as much and we're going to see a little bit later if that needs to change. I suspect that I'm, I'm going to want to come back a little, push that just a little bit more, but I don't want to start off that way. Inez has some good recommendations when we were talking about you dealing with some soreness. Mm -hmm. um, she said it's good to make changes and your posture is really important. Which is interesting because Kellen has been talking about um, posture a lot with playing the cello. Mm -hmm. um, Inez says that sometimes she actually takes breaks from sitting and Chris draws standing up. Well, you know, I did that a little bit when I was when I was at the academy and I was doing, oh, what was it, 10, 10, 12 hour days every now and then. That was that was a little uncommon, but when I was doing uh, a lot of drawing and painting and I wasn't really taking many breaks, um, I did the same thing for a little bit. Um, Anthony, in his studio though, his floors, uh, he's got some, some floors that like to shake a little bit. So if you're up and walking and you like kind of shift your weight a little bit, uh, the other easels 
just move just a tiny, tiny bit. And that really throws people off. <laughs> it really messes with people. So as funny as it was, um, I didn't get to do too much of that. That's like here when we get an earthquake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it can even be just really small, but usually I'll hear out in the studio so some people going, oh, <laughs> because like they had their pencil down on their paper. Yeah, yeah, everybody, you'll see everybody just kind of like put their hands up for a second. They're all like, what is going on? <laughs> why, why, is my, why is my drawing moving? <laughs> Before I get too far, I'm just going to I'm going to use this other brush here. This one here. It is a dynasty. Oh, where are you going? It's a dynasty. Come on back. Where are you? On the painting. Just hit auto. Or get yep, there. You go. Yeah. So um, I've got this little brush here. This is a dynasty. I think it's number four. Yeah, dynasty four and really soft i think it's a synthetic i don't know squirrel hair maybe it's supposed to be um so i'm going to use this just to blend out a little bit of what i have here just get rid of some of those brush strokes and it's not going to be perfect and i am going to have to go back uh, with at least one other brush and try to smooth this out just a little but um i'm also it's going to get rid of some of that texture and detail that i have in there so I'm also going to have to come back, pull some of that back out. And I have not applied any paint here, and actually you can see I'm, I'm kind of pulling the paint out of the brush as I work, because uh, I really don't want any contamination. Yeah, yeah, not bad. So. Yeah, I've already, unfortunately, I, I, I think I have sort of resigned myself to having to do uh, one more layer on this, but that's okay. I don't know, maybe not. I, I definitely think I'm, I'm going to reestablish these whites, these bright, bright highlights, really put a, another layer of white in there, and then... Um, probably fix my chroma just a little bit. I, I think I'm gonna have to do that. Otherwise though, it's really not bad. It's just not not perfect. So I think that'll that'll solve that issue. Normally I would do that all in one sitting, all in one day. Um, I don't think we're gonna do that all on the same stream though. Uh, I usually I'll, if I if I make a mistake like that and it's a it's a pretty broad mistake and I feel like I have to go through and you know sort of uh, sort of let's see does that say plus oh yeah it does sort of go through and fix some things um, some some broader things like my my general chroma um, those I will do after you know lunch or something I'll take a break go to lunch. Avoid getting frustrated with it. You don't want to be frustrated with a painting. Oh man, that's the worst. You start painting and you feel like, oh, well, I have to finish it. I have to get this section done today. And you get frustrated with the painting. Invariably, that painting, that's going to be some of the worst painting you've done because you're unhappy and you're frustrated with it. When you sit down, you have to just let it, let it all go. Or you're going to have a bad painting. That's been my experience. When I'm frustrated with a, with a painting, uh, I usually, I rush sometimes, I accept uh, something that's not as good as it needs to be, something like that. It's, all, it's always just never quite my best work. I can't do that. It's not good enough. All right, so we're just gonna blend out this little line I have. into it there you can see this this uh, this brush is doing a bit of heavy lifting here it's 
I don't know how well you can really see what's what's happening because it's very very subtle um, but yeah, it's doing it's doing its work um, also here I want to I want to show this as well um, oh no back where we had it you can see that there is just no topography in there you've got a little bit of dullness uh, depending on how much paint I've put down um, but you you don't get those like big paint ridges or anything like that uh, there you go yeah you can really see it there the thing that you're seeing that texture that you're seeing especially on the right side um, that's the texture of the panel itself so the paint has very very little texture no real topography that I'm adding um, and that's because of that dynasty brush that I was just using so it's doing its work all right so over on the left side here we've got this little green spot we've a uh, blue green and we've got some yellow highlights coming down so I want to make sure to get those before doing anything else um, we've got this little highlight here should be bright bright white it isn't uh, so I, I do think that that one I'm just gonna come back to that's okay I'll get that a little bit later not a big deal out that line just a little and I'm just sort of making mental notes of what I'd like to change and uh, really I'm not moving on um, you know tomorrow the next day whenever I come back to the painting uh, or later today for the next section the session I'm not going to move on from this section until I am happy with it. Um, too often, when I was a younger artist, I would do, you know, some area, some aspect of the painting, and I'd say, eh, I'll fix this later. And I wouldn't come back to it because I'd forget all about it, because I had just decided, well, I'm done with this section of the painting, it's fine. And, nope, can't do that, it never, it's never fine. <laughs> That's how, you, that's how you just forget about things, you miss things. Your painting should have looked much better. Ah, oh, if only you could have just done it right then, then you wouldn't have missed it. Those are the things that just like keep me up at night. <laughs> of, oh, I already varnished a painting. But I thought this one part, oh, it could have been a little bit better. Could have been just a tiny bit better. That's what exactly. You take that and you go into your next painting. Make the next painting better. That's fine. All right, so I'm giving just a little bit of that texture back. Right over here. Just a little bit. Yep. A little bit more brightness right in front right here. We're reflecting these lights, so I want to make sure... Our, uh, our, our overall value holds true compared to over here. Not doing too bad. Not too bad. All right, I'm gonna take just a second. Take a little drink. Um, I'm still not quite used to uh, streaming like this and you know making sure that I'm taking breaks when I'm supposed to and taking drinks when I'm supposed to if it were up to me and I were left to my own devices and I know this because at one point I was in Pennsylvania and no one else was there <laughs> um, if left to my own devices I would just sit and paint and never do anything else and I'd never get up and I'd wither away and die <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tell you what, why don't you, why don't you take my, uh, my face cam off? I, I want to mess with something here. And otherwise, my, my finger is just going to be directly on the camera lens. So, okay. Yeah, it looks like our exposure is a little off. There we go. All right, all right. Give me that. Give me that face cam back. Let's let's see what that looks like. 
Is that better? Am I changing anything at all? Does it work? Yeah. It was it was just it was pretty bright before, so. Is that better? That seems to be. There we go. I was getting blown out by the sun because I am very, very white. <laughs> Because, you know, it, it's really amazing how uh, being here in the Dominican Republic, in the Caribbean, in our tropical island paradise, I never see the sun. I don't, I just don't go outside ever. There's a window right here. That's the best I ever get. <laughs> it's because every time I do go out into the sun uh, for five minutes, I come inside with a horrible sunburn because I'm just not used to it. Like my, my, my German skin can't handle it. You look like you're gonna say something. You, oh, you look like just... you're gonna say something insulting to me. No, 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 <laughs> I was just thinking about myself okay. constantly getting sunburned. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like the opposite where I, I do go out in it, but I, I consistently have a sunburn. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do it. Even with SPF 50, I don't know. I don't oh, know. the sun's brutal here. It, it is just, it is brutal. It's a strong sun. That's the way everyone describes it. It's a strong sun. And it just always out. You cannot escape it. It was raining all day today here, um, earlier in the day. Raining a lot last night. And today, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit cloudy, but yeah, there's there's plenty of sun out. Um, they actually, as, as far as I can find, they don't record the number of sunny days here because it's all of them. Um, we, we get those Caribbean rain showers that last for, you know, usually 20 minutes, and then the rest of the day is super sunny. Um, every now and then, like today, we, yeah, we got, we got a lot of rain today, but it's rare. Yeah, the only day or days that I can remember it just being full cloudy for an entire day was probably when the, the hurricanes come. Mm -hmm. But even then, sometimes you get like a, hey, look, the sun. You know, it's funny. We tried to uh, we tried to put some cameras out on our porch for that hurricane. Tried to capture some of it a little bit, and. Um, there's nothing to capture. It, it rained like, actually, the break time screen that you guys see whenever we go on break, that is the hurricane. It's just nothing. It's, <laughs> I well, don't, I don't was, know. I don't want to like give people the wrong information though, because you should be careful during oh, yeah, hurricanes. Absolutely. That was a category one. If just for whatever reason, like we were, uh, we, you know, we're on uh, the north side of the island and uh, we're up on a hill and uh, yeah, we just didn't get anything at all. And, you know, obviously I don't want a hurricane to come by, but I was a little bit disappointed. <laughs> it's like, come on, I'm trying to video this thing. What happened? It's just no, nothing, nothing at all. Oh, Inez is recommending SPF 99 and to use it every hour. Thank you. I'm going to try that. I, uh, I, I'll look this up. I don't know that this is true. I have heard, though, that anything past about 50 isn't much better for your skin. It doesn't really change anything. Um, I don't know. I guess I could be wrong, though. I don't know where I got that information. Couldn't no, go. I have heard that, too, but I remember when we were in Florida, we used SPF 100, mm -hmm. and it was weird. It was, like, really thick and gritty, but, yeah, I didn't, even, yeah I didn't I don't, even get a tan. <laughs> I don't I don't know what, uh, what, maybe it was, like, expired or something, the SPF way too much that we used. Oh, I just thought that that was how it was, because, like, uh, Yes. That's how much it blocks the sun, I guess. I don't know. We should try it. Maybe. So, why don't you switch to my palette for just a second here. Um, I'm just I'm just putting together a little bit of this kind of bright blue-green. Um, and I, I don't know how much I'm going to use it. Probably very little. But I, I just want, you know, a reasonable base for it. Um, so that if I do want to use it later... I've got something already started because I've got just a little touch of it on his hat here. Just right, little, little tiny, little tiny spot right there. So I'm just going to put something together. See if that's what I need. 
and then I'm sure I'm going to add a little bit of green to some other areas just to cool it down a little bit just to see if I can if I can uh, accent the green that's around his head. I love this little this little green spot right here. Love this little provides great separation to his face. Really like that. Good job, me. <laughs> um, this reference was was photoshopped from geez, thirty some odd different different images. And I took tons and tons of images for this one, um, and I ended up using quite a few of them. Um, several spots of the uh, of the reflection here; those are all different. The brush is a different thing from all the you know sort of coins and chains, and that's all different. Um, he, I, actually, he changed a little bit within the reference too. He's turned so that if you were to look at this actual reflection from this angle and him from this angle, they don't match they don't quite match and that's that's a little bit of the 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 artist prerogative and, and magic of being able to photoshop an image like this that even though it doesn't quite match it still looks right that's all it's important it's all i need realistic uh, maybe not pretty cool looking yes that's all i want a bit of my my attitude towards realism in artwork <laughs> it doesn't look right yeah then it's right if I hadn't said anything would you have ever noticed I'm gonna guess probably not what are you doing over there what are you, are you snacking to very very quietly open this pop tart <laughs> but i can hear it <laughs> we need we need snack cam we need rachel's snack cam no no we have we've discussed this before we're not a snack channel <laughs> no give stop me, give me this there we go i i did that that's my switcher board now <laughs> That's not, that's not fair. You you get to eat pop tarts and I don't. What kind of pop tart is it? Um, it's not the s'mores kind. It's the other kind. Oh, cherry. We got some pop tarts. All right, switch your board stick. What screen do you want? No, this is this is nice. I, you know, we're just we're just hanging out. We're connecting. We're chatting. All right. Well, hang out for a second. I'm this is no longer a paint stream. This is just no no no. no switch your back. <laughs> All right, producer Rachel has abandoned us. Pop tart secured. Oh my god, the important aspect of today's. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to work on uh, just right right on down here. Going to get some of his face put in just to ease that line a little bit. Um, and I mean, you can see from the reference, there is, uh, you know, it's not a consistent color, not a consistent value even, that comes all the way, all the way across. It's more of this kind of light peach, and then it gets a little bit darker, a little bit more purpley, um, then comes out a little bit light again. So I'm, I'm going to mix up just two, put them all over, just to, to sort of mix the two together, and I'm, I'm not going to worry about it after that. We'll do the rest um, once I start working on his actual face and beard and everything, then we'll work on it. But for now, I'm just gonna do some easy, easy colors and see where it takes me. You got something? Popped our cam? No? Okay. Caitlin's here. Caitlin! Hello. Uh, she suggested that maybe we could do a short snack of the day segment each stream. Ah, uh, see now, now <laughs> you're speaking my language. Maybe if we get sponsorships instead of art products, it'll be <laughs> snacks. And that could be our snack segment. I would, you know what? Let me tell you about some snacks I think that I've mentioned before, and they're called um, Cosmic Crunchies. Oh, yeah. And I just love them. Uh, I, I can't get enough. They're so good. I love them. Um, they are freeze dried Skittles, and you get them on Amazon, and they are fantastic. So good. 
Um, we have gotten them before, and we recently just got a new batch of them, and they are the berry kind, and they are very good. <laughs> yeah, those are fantastic. So those are, there you go, those are my snack of the week. Rachel, do you have a snack of the week you'd like to mention? Okay. You know, also, shout out to, uh, to I want to call them Canine Crunchies, because that's from <laughs> the 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> Cosmic Crunchies, yeah, shout out to Cosmic Crunchies. Um, I will say they're a little expensive uh, considering how little, you know, Skittles cost, but man, oh, they're worth it. Oh, they're so good. Rachel's gonna put them in the chat. Producer Rachel's putting them in the chat. I think it's Space Age Snacks. Space Age Snacks? Yeah, that sounds right. I think that's right. All right, I'm gonna get my mall stick out again. Of course, we're also paying, you know, for shipping and things like that, so it's really verging on not worth the price for us, but uh, I, I love it. I don't think I've ever seen freeze-dried snacks like that anywhere else either, only online. We had a, a couple of people here try them out just to see what they thought, and yeah, no, everyone said that they've never had anything like that here, so introducing some, some good stuff to everybody. in the view just a little bit listen I have to do a painting I'm busy over here maybe we can reevaluate the camera setup a little bit there's anything specific you guys want to see but we've got close up i'm pushing for that snack cam <laughs> we'll we'll evaluate <laughs> <laughs> we've got close up we've got a wide shot of the painting in the palette we do have a painting cam but i'm noticing that it's the the position that it's in right now it's not really usable because it's just the no. back of your head <laughs> oh yeah 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 we can I'm also, I'm really, I'm really leaning in, so yeah, that's just part of it. And your, uh, your, um, chat cam, that looks pretty good. Yep. So yeah, this is going to be fun though. It's, it's going well, but I'm definitely seeing opportunities for improvement. Well, I would say maybe we can try out something different next week. I'm not sure that we're going to be streaming next week. We're gonna be we're gonna be away from the academy um, next weekend, so I don't know if we'll be streaming. If we stream next weekend, it would be on Saturday. If we stream the weekend after that, it would be on Sunday, because we're gonna be gone a Sunday through a Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe we'll take some, some cool video and we can share those videos on stream. That'll be fun. We'll force everyone to sit through our our, our vacation videos. <laughs> yeah, vacation time. <laughs> You know what, I think actually uh, I'm going to finish off 
this little section that I'm working on, and then uh, maybe we'll, we'll we'll call it for today. Um, I've got a lot more painting I want to get done this week, but but I think yeah, we'll we'll just finish this up and then go enjoy our weekend. Maybe play some more of the the Sherlock Holmes uh, games we were talking about. If, if anyone's interested in Sherlock Holmes games, we are currently playing Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 from Frogware Games. Um, and it's pretty good. I don't know. It's a little weird. It's not very Sherlock Holmes-y, you know? It is fun, though. Do you have a review? You want to go? On Chapter 1? Yeah, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. I like it, but it yeah, it definitely just feels like Sherlock Holmes inspired as opposed to actual canon. It, yeah, it seems like they're trying to make him really cool. Yeah, he's way too cool. He's too cool. He looks like he, you know, he dresses like he's in a K-pop band, which is great, unless you're Sherlock Holmes, <laughs> in which case, I don't know, maybe he shouldn't. <laughs> Oh, we have um, a very important question in the chat. Okay. We're, we're a snack channel at this point. Right, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> are Space Age snacks, Cosmic Crunchies, better than Peeps and Pez? Ooh, uh, so first of all, yes. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> more importantly, I mean, we're talking about some very different things here. I think, I think Pez are a good pocketable snack where uh, Cosmic Crunchies, that, that's an event. You know what I mean? That's that. That's something you know. You're not gonna like sit down to a movie and have Pez. You're gonna carry those around in your pocket and eat them throughout the day. Cosmic Crunchies, though, you're not gonna carry those around because it will disrupt your day. Because you pull out some some Cosmic Crunchies and that's what you're doing now. You're not you're not doing other things. You're not focusing on anything else. You're eating Cosmic Crunchies. It's it's an experience. Um, Peeps, uh, peeps are peeps hold a weird place in my heart. Um, I love them, but only certain ones. Um, the birthday cake peeps, those are great. The uh, the peppermint peeps, I think the peppermint peeps are my personal favorite. But also, you gotta let them cook for like three days so that they get that little bit of little bit of kind of crust on them. You know what I mean? The the outside gets a little bit tougher. You mean the like making them stale? Yeah, yeah, you gotta let them cook. Listen, no, no, no. You're not, you're not gonna get a frozen pizza, and when you put it in the oven, you're like, oh, I'm making it stale at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. No, no, you're gonna, you're gonna cook it. You gotta let it cook. You're gonna make it what it's, what it's supposed to be. And I feel like the manufacturers of Peeps know that, otherwise they wouldn't sell them in those like nine packs no no it's more than i think it's 12 i think it's it's they're like packs of 12. no one's gonna eat packs of 12 in a single sitting so you open them and then they get better you open them you have one you're like this is pretty good i'll come back to it tomorrow and then tomorrow you open them again you have two because they're even better and then you open them the third day now they're cooked and now you can have the other nine all at once Let us know what other snacks we should review. Uh, <laughs> I think we're going to wrap up for today. Um, thanks for thanks for joining us. And next week, when we come back, um, if we are back next week, uh, we'll we'll be sure to put that online. We'll be sure to mention uh, what time and, and day that we're gonna we're gonna stream. And if not, we'll be sure to mention that as well. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks for putting your questions in the chat. If you have any other questions, maybe for next week's stream, let me know. I'd be I'd love to talk to you about art related things or I guess snack related things. I guess, I don't know. That's fine. Have a good weekend everybody. See ya. Bye. <laughs>